I'm just a man at the end of the day, you know, I'm prone to make mistakes. I've got to, you know, I've got to value the things that I have right now because they can, they can be taken away and I can be the one that takes them away from me. Uh-huh. Yo, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness the journey that is the Life Choices Podcast. Yeah! Backed by popular demand. <sighs> oh, man. Right? Yeah. There's very few people that have been guests um, on the Life Choices podcast. A lot of people ask to come back a second time, but there's a handful that have come back three, four, and five times, and you're one of those. Uh, there's four people off the top of my head that I know that just keep coming back to uh, sit and have a chat with us here. I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored that you thought of me. Dude, are you kidding me? I'm super stoked that you always want to come and, and have a have a con- conversation well, with me. I mean, I look, look at the company. You know, ah, there it is. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> no, Boom. Seriously, man. Look at the company, man. You, uh, you're one of those guys I can talk to about anything. And I know even you, you'll have an opinion on it, but you're not going to judge me or turn your back because I say something offensive. If it offends you, you'll say something about that. But it's just not you're like one of those. You're like one of those guys that anybody can talk to. and You'll listen. I appreciate it. I've, I've been practicing more on the listening aspect of it. Not obviously at the podcast, because that is clearly part of my job is to listen. But in life itself, I have been practicing more of the talking less and listening more just because you got to teach me that trick. Well, it's (laughs) interesting. Well, it's, it's a great trick because the information, the free information that you will get is priceless. You know, I have a bunch of guys that do a lot of things that I don't know much about construction, pulling cars apart. And all I have to do is just ask a question and let them go. Yeah. And I just get all this information from them. And, and it's great because it's a way that you can show people that are important to you that you are actually interested and intrigued by what they do on right. a daily basis. You know, right now, my buddy, uh, Shout out Brian Hernandez. He does a lot of building things and he does that with uh, Cameron Bryce. Shout out Hellbent Garage, Custom Garage. They they build different things for different restaurants and they have programs on their laptops that they like design all these really cool things. And I know nothing about those things. So when I see it, I'm like, yo, what's what's this program about? And then boom, just a fun of all this information. They're so they're so knowledgeable. Like it's crazy the amount of knowledge people have that you might not know about. And if you just took that time to listen, ask a question and have them just open up. Yeah. But even the, even the information, like when it comes to like anything like technology oriented, like programs, computer programs, you know, when they're speaking to me, they might as well be speaking Mandarin, you know, (laughs) like uh, it's just not my forte, but it's still good to try to absorb that knowledge. And I do appreciate that. Yeah. And I'm just using my friends as an example. You might have friends in different industries. Oh, I do. And if you, and, and you want to practice the listening aspect of life, uh, again, information is just willing, willingly given right. when you ask and then just wait. I got to start asking for the right information. You are trying to learn about the wrong thing. Exactly. Yes. But we're not there anymore, right? We no. have good news today. Good news, man. All right. Really, really good news. Actually, it's like, it's like a mixed bag. Okay, you know, it always is not, with not, you, motherfucker. Not to bring up bags in yeah. equation, but <laughs> it's like it's like a mixed bag. You have to come to my house, yeah, at Jupiter Farms. So big things, like good things, have been happening oh my since gosh, last yeah. time we talked, right? Yep. It's not the biggest house in the world, but it's not about that. It's mm-hmm. I've never been lived in a house. It's always been ever no, like it's always been condos. It's always been apartments. It's always been a friend's couch. <laughs> you know, I've had the most fortunate life down here in Florida, good and bad, because the bad things have honestly built a better character in me and have humbled me. The cockiness that I had in my youth, no matter what I was doing, has finally subsided. I, I, can, I can see with clarity, I'm just a man at the end of the day. I'm prone to make mistakes. I've got to, you know, I've got to value the things that I have right now because they can, they can be taken away and I could be the one that takes them away from me. I have to be super careful. I moved into a house with a big yard. I have two dogs that are running around that are just happy to see me. I have four little children, 
four little baby girls that when I come home, they look up, they want me to be there. They want daddy. This is this. That's my passion. Rebuilding that house from the dilapidated thing that it was into, you know, new HVAC, new electric, new floors. It was a, a project that I couldn't be more happy been a part of. And, and and I'm glad to hear this because it's it's those four wonderful children and the wonderful bride that you oh, have Kelly, Kelly's that amazing. I'm hoping has been keeping you on the straight and narrow since the last time we talked. Because the last time we talked, you know, you had survived an almost fatal situation. Twice in one year. Twice in one year. And I don't Ke- mean to laugh, but if and, I don't and, laugh, I'll and cry. And Kelly, hello, Kelly, by your side still. She's beyond me. She saved my life. Mm-hmm. She saved my life. And then here comes little old me trying to trying to destroy that again. It's hard for some of us men to let go of Peter Pan. And what I mean by that is the Peter Pan syndrome is we want to live the life that we were living in our 20s forever because we don't want to let go of the fun. So I came here to chill and then all of a sudden I'm Peter Pan. You know what what I mean? we all, like I, I said loosely in this sentence for both of us, I've recently made moves to let go of my own Peter Pan syndrome because I've been a single man for the better part of my 46 years. Part of you, I think, the constant tripping over yourself or putting yourself in situations that almost fucks your life up, in my opinion, is that Peter Pan syndrome. Like you're not willing to let go of that. But now, do you feel that you're okay with not doing those foolish things? So that's, that's a really, really good question. I, I think, that, and I want to actually get into something. Every time I've stopped and my life's back on track and everything's going in the right direction, it doesn't mean I'm out of the woods because I got this like demon inside of me that resurfaces. And it, I don't think it's about growing up. I think it's about addiction. And I think it's about underlying medical issues, mental issues that, when they do come to the surface, I want to quiet them. They're, they're like voices. And I don't mean it in the no, you, schizophrenic way. No, they are exactly what you're saying yeah. they are. They're voices in your yeah. head. We all have them. Yeah. We all have them. I don't care what anyone else other says. We have multiple voices in our heads that, that, that get us to not do things and get us to do things. Whether we like it or not, it's a matter of learning how to, I don't want to use the word control, but how to navigate through those voices to do the positive and the good we should be doing. It's pretty on point with exactly how I feel. Uh, my, my, my demons, as I call them, they'll yell at me. You know, they'll, 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 they want attention. They want to be fed. It happens at the most inopportune times. Everything's good at home, nice and quiet. Kelly's in love with me again because she always loves me. Doesn't always like you. Doesn't always like me. That, hey, and, Doesn't and always we, like do, me. we do that to ourselves, to our partners. Right. If our partner doesn't like us, it's not usually that they did something. We usually did something. Yeah, I mean, when there's a problem in Kelly and I's relationship, 90% of the time I look in the mirror, which I had to learn over time, especially in the beginning of our relationship, I know better now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the voices will yell at me and, and they're like, come on, this is, this, is, this is how you get through this. You know, you know how to make it go away. You know, you know. So you have one voice saying, hey, this is boring. Let's stop fucking doing this shit. Let's go have our fun. But then you have the other voices that are like, yo, dude, you know what's going to happen if you go down that road. Oh, what, the, the angel and the demon. Yeah. You got Jiminy Cricket on one side right. and some other asshole on the other side. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you still in uh, an AA or a drug anonymous or, um, or so meetings? I- I'm doing, I'm doing like not as many AA meetings because I'm actually recovery church is I, I want faith-based programs because my faith lifted me to just a better place with all those around me, my relationships, my friend, you know, all my friendships, uh, my fam- my family relationships. I mean, Christ is he's doing it for you. Yeah, he's really, that's really awesome. doing it for me. Like, I, I, I started getting emotional, so mm-hmm. that's why. No, that's I, fine. <laughs> you know? Hey, you know me. We let it out. Who gives a flying I know, but I, told, I promised myself I would cry. Whatever. Crying is part of natural humanness. We yeah. all do it. We all do it regularly. Whatever you should do it regularly to let shit out. Uh, faith, 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 driven help. Mm. I like that. Faith to me is very important. It has come back into my life over the past couple of years, and it doesn't matter to me which faith you choose or which religion you're falling into, as long as you have a relationship with God. 
I think you're doing great. And whatever it is that you need to do to create that relationship or to continue that relationship, I say steadfast, keep going, don't stop. If you know what it is you're looking for, I'm sure you found it in a certain church. Right. And, and the, the way I found the church was totally by accident. We're on the way home and, and Kelly's like, so what are we going to do? The light bulb went off and I was like, hey, why don't we look for another church in the area? You know, it's, it's Easter. Maybe we should. And Kelly's like, I love that idea. We found, we found a, a family church in, in the farms. Just I mean, happened to walk on into one. Yeah. It was amazing. It was right down the street and it was, we would have got there five minutes before the service started. So, so we get there, I walk in, it was the vibe. It was the vibe for me. And this is why I say faith is so good because whether people believe it or not, I know our viewership is kind of into it. That's why they listen. Showing up at 9.05 at the other place and not being able to be let in there because right. again, you already felt that that wasn't really like where you wanted to be. He steered you elsewhere to a place that now makes you happy. My second home. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's, it's absolutely divine intervention. Yeah. Like you said, like there, I don't believe in coincidence. Fuck no. I don't. So I, I, as soon as I walked in, uh, a, a guy came up to me and was like, Hey man, you know, and like welcomed me. And it, it wasn't like there was a welcoming committee. He just knew that he hadn't recognized my face. I talked to those guys every single day. That's awesome. Yeah. So because you mentioned like, you know, you, doing things to humble yourself and you want the right church, the right environment that you feel that you can do that. I just had a thought because you've lived such an extraordinary life down the other path sure. than people that attend uh, church, synagogue, what have you. Have you ever thought about joining a group or being a speaker for youth or people that are in a situation? <laughs> There's no coincidence. It's so uh -huh. funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to a uh, teen Bible study today with my pastor and that guy, Brian, who was the first that introduced himself to me. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to listen today. I'm being brought in and kind of like, you know, set up to maybe continue yeah. the message. That's awesome. Which I'm not opposed to at all. Well, you're, you're the prime example of someone who should give the message because you have lived the life of the opposite side of it. Because you know? if I can do it, anybody that, can Those do are the it. biggest, and, and not only that, but it, it's so, it's so strange how it's so true that those who have struggled are the best teachers. Not only do you have a story to share with people and you can use examples in your own life of how you went down the wrong road, you almost become more relatable to the youth. Because there's a certain time in your life where you look at that person that's so polished and perfect and they're the minister, the rabbi. So when you look at those people, because what you think as a child is they've lived this life the whole time and they're just like that cookie cutter, good person to God. The youth people, the, the teenagers would look at someone like us and be like, all right, I kind of get it because like, he looks like what I'm going through. You become like the best type of teacher. Honestly, being able to help anybody means the world to me. It really does. Like just having the ability to be present in somebody else's life, if only to listen, human beings are all worthy of love. It doesn't matter. Every one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. It does not matter race, color, creed. I don't care about that. Like, like I, Christ doesn't make anything by or let's just say God or whatever, whatever, whatever you, you whatever want to you call, call it. it. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. that, that doesn't matter to me either. At all. Like, your journey's your journey. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm never going to try to shove anything down anybody's throat. That's why I say just having faith in right. something. Exactly. To me, that's the yeah. important thing. If God made this person, they're worthy of love. Even the bad ones. You know, before before Especially I started going the to the bad ones. But, oh, no, but like there's some bad, bad ones yeah, out there. Yeah, but still. Like, no, like, like what about. They, they didn't start that way. They didn't. They did not start that way. I, I, I don't, I know like we can go like full on, like when it comes to like serial killers and stuff. That's, like that, but, that's exactly what But I'm they were about. children at one point, right? And there Some, was an innocence happened. and there was an innocence to them in them before something happened, right. whether it was something in their own brain or something in their life. That's what the Bible says too. So why, why not at least give, give them a chance? Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. The message that the pastor has in my church is amazing. Like I would, my, my jaw dropped when on Easter, when he explained the process, you know, why we're celebrating Easter and everything like that. Like I was floored and I've heard the story, but not the way he put it. He put it in 
terms that you were listening differently. No, it's what it's what it is. Like the way you heard something when you were fifteen going to church with your parents, let's say, mm. is gonna be completely different than what you're hearing this year because look at the individual who you are now compared to the individual you were. But I think a lot of it has to do with the messenger because you actually just Absolutely. said that. Like, you know, if I'm giving a message out, I could be more relatable. Mm-hmm. Like he he put it into a modern day setting with characters that I can understand. Cause honestly, I can't understand characters walking around on in robes and, and, and <laughs> you know, I'm laughing only because like, I, I can't understand it because when I'm at home, I'm basically wearing <laughs> a robe ish type thing. So yeah. But like Jesus is crew, you know, yeah. <laughs> those guys, that posse. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't even know what they did for work. Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? I don't think anyone really does because they're just, they're just stories that were passed on to and for other people that i mean fuck you play uh the telephone game with your friends it's just it's just the people you the know the story is going to come out different in in a matter of a day mm. and then all of a sudden we're supposed to believe this story is that written the exact same way as it was how many fucking <laughs> years ago like come on something got switched along the way i yeah I'll, i i will say that, that valid point like Human beings are tend to misinterpret or not give the right dictation of, of the actual events, embellish, like things like that happen. But one thing's for sure. Yes. That man died on the cross. I mean, I wasn't there, so I didn't, I didn't see <laughs> shit. I, I, I have a new, new train of thought uh, based on information I've been absorbing lately and a couple things that kind of really our interesting way to think about it right now is there's a universe, right? But now there's a lot more talk about the metaverse. I look at it this way. There's 8 billion people on this planet, right? 7 billion or 8 billion people on this planet. So the way I look at it is that there is 7 or 8 billion different realities on this planet. Because the way you look at life might be similar, but it's not the same yeah. as my reality, yeah. right? And it never will be. Exactly. And I'm, I'm trying with every ounce of my being to create the reality that I want. Right. And I believe I can. Mm. You're creating the reality that you want each day that you successfully stay away from the old person you used to be. So if you're creating your own reality, you now have a new one. So therefore, there was an old reality. So how are those two things not two different universes? Right. Right. I hear you. And then the other point that came across lately that I love is it was actually Dave Chappelle. I watched one of his most recent. I I, I love Dave Chappelle. He's fucking, he's epic. One of his most recent uh, specials, there was a part in it, and, and I'll, I'll loosely get onto it. He, he basically says, like, right now, you are in my dream, right? My dream is to have a podcast. My reality is I have a podcast. You're a guest on my podcast. You are a guest in my dream right now, just as much as I'm a part of your dream, because your reality that you're creating allowed me to be the host of a podcast that you chose to go on. So thank you. Same thing he said to his audience. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your dream. dream. It's just interesting. I saw it. Well, speaking of that with the, the different universes and realities, you're, you're doing much better now, mm. clearly. Oh, yeah. Than almost a year ago. It would have been like October. So your new lifestyle right now. Yeah. Yes, but you, you know what? I, I got I got sidetracked for a second, and I yes. want to get back to it. Okay, I want to because this is this is actually important. Go for so, it. So there's these there's these guys that were uh, 75th Ranger Regiment, Third Battalion. They're twins, right? Uh, Kevin and Jason Seals. No, no, no. Uh, Rangers. Okay. In, in the army, you know, and and on that note, there's fewer Rangers than there are Seals. Okay. A lot of people think Seals are are it. There are fewer rangers than there are seals. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying it's 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 tough. Okay. Now these guys were they've been in all kinds of stuff, man. You know what I mean? Like they've seen it all. A lot of us have issues that don't go away, and we treat those like I I have treated them in the past. You know, and I wasn't that far past, but you know, burying them with drugs and alcohol. Jason was speaking this was just this past saturday so this is a fresh idea and i want to run it by you he he was speaking about his experience with coming to peace with everything that he's been through and the way he did that 
was doing an ayahuasca retreat. This has been said to me so many times, and I've always thought about and entertained the idea, but I was having a conversation with Kelly after, and she heard it too, and she was like, that's amazing. The, the description of what he experienced when he was doing the ayahuasca is exactly, it's a parallel for like how I would want mine to, oh, you get what I'm saying? It's exactly. So you're playing with the idea on whether or not you should do a true ayahuasca 100 percent in there's always gonna be different trains of thoughts on it <laughs> with everything in life this is what i'll say because i have done some extensive research into the topic because right. it's uh you know drugs have been a very big part of my life up until you know maybe 10 years ago because of the people that i've watched that speak openly about it because of the documentaries that i've seen on it and because of what they do now which is differently than like in the 70s in the 70s it was one plant that the natives processed okay. it down into this ingestible thing that people take. And back then in the seventies, it was a rapid entry. I almost want to say painful ishness mm. for a short period of holy fuck enlightenment mm. to a not so great exit. Now they have two plants that they process together to give you a smoother entry and exit and a elongated holy fuck enlightenment and it is supposed to bring forth memories that one may have buried so deeply that they don't even know they exist yeah, and that's it's exact bro i'll ahead, say this please. for me i have said i will only do it and i will do it before i pass on from okay. this universe okay. i will only do it when i know i have gotten myself to a very good place physically and mentally well that's the thing about it you want to do you want to do that in order to get physically and mentally healthy yeah. i'm gonna go and again i'm one individual who's done some research like any other drug any other hallucinogenic that you do we've both done them i know we have i have Definitely have. I know you yeah, have. Duh. So <laughs> whatever you're holding onto right. going into a trip is usually what's going to come into that motherfucking trip. That's what, I, but so look, you're hitting the nail on the head and that that's why I want to do it. I'll explain. Go ahead. Okay. Finish, finish. So I would like to have the most high energy positivity going through me so that when the devil whatever shit is buried so deep in that I don't even remember comes out, right. I'm able to handle it because you will forever. This is across the board. What people say that have done it multiple times, you will forever be changed. Okay. It's good because you have, I think it's called a shaman. You have someone there with you. That's exactly. What he's you will be at times profusely throwing up. You will be exiting a lot of energies, toxins, mentally, physically, and then supposed to be like literally like walking on fucking water, basically. From the horse's mouth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Jason, Jason was very descriptive. And, you know, it was a shaman that they flew in. I think he did his in Costa Rica. They brought a Peruvian shaman over there. I was like, going to say, you want to go to Peru to do this. Right. No, they brought a Peruvian <laughs> and then awesome. they set, they set everything up. Like it was very professionally done. And you know, it, it, see, I'm trying to get over PTSD, bro. Mm -hmm. Like bad. You, you, this has been plaguing me for a very, very long time. And the EMDR, which is supposed to target that is a form of therapy. Doesn't help me process it. It'll take me there and excite me or, anger me it's it's just not complete you, you get you don't take a person there they can't get through it and i, I couldn't you know i've done it all man <laughs> i've taken the medications i've tried street drugs i've tried uh group therapies you know it's not nothing's fully worked yet no it, i like it, well, i i touch on it and like my brain tries to pull me right the heck out and i start getting angry I get angry. Uh, my palms start sweating. It's it's ugly. Where does Kelly feel about this? So Jason says he was able to make peace with everybody. And I don't want to, 
Jason, I hope I'm not overstepping. I'm not using your last name. Just total respect thing. He didn't tell me not to tell anybody, but, you mm-hmm. know, I just, when he was over there, like, he was able to make peace. With all that he had. With, Listen, if Kelly's on board, I say, I, I honestly say, pack a bag, go to Peru. Yeah. You can go online now and you can find the right places to do all this and get connected with the right people to enjoy it. Right. I'd love to hear have you back on after the fact and talk about it. Because, I got to bury this beast, man. I have yeah, to bury the yeah. beast. You don't have to bury the beast. You have to become okay with the beast. Okay. You have to become okay with the All beast. Right. So, so the strongest men in the world are the quietest, calmest ones because they've been able to go to that point of seeing the beast and knowing how to just put them at bay. Hmm. And don't think that that, that beast can't come back out because if you fuck with the motherfucker, his family, his financials, his love, his heart, he can bring that beast out, but a real man, a real powerful man knows he can and doesn't. And that's where you want to get to. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's when I'm alone. It's not others. It's not situations like that. It's, it's here. I, I, I have to live with myself and I have to look at myself. And sometimes that shit's hard, man. I'm willing to try anything to make, to make my soul cleanse. I need to go a little deeper. You want to go a little deeper. You want to... I get it. You want to get yourself to a point where you don't have to worry anymore about fucking shit up yourself. Yeah. And I get that. I do. The road you want to take, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I say, fuck it. Like, it's something that I think most people should do because what you're going to take is already in our brains. There's a percentage of it that's actually in our brain from birth. Sure. It's just in an area where we don't actually use it which is quite interesting. There's an old 1970s documentary you should watch on ayahuasca. And it talks about what that uh, chemical is that's in our brain, but we don't have any use for it. We don't, we don't even know how to get to it. It it only, it only comes out when you're during, when you're passing away, right? Is that what it is? I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's like DMT. It is. Yeah. 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 So that's when your body, like when your brain knows it's dying, Mm -hmm. like when it releases DMT, and that's why people that are passing away, so a, a, a lot of them will crack a smile. Because it's a euphoric it's feeling. Euphoric. I think you're actually correct because it is the DMT that they talk about. That is the spirit molecule. Yeah. So that is what it is in, in your brain. Now that you have a newfound faith mm-hmm. and it sounds like what you're trying to do is lessen the worries, mm-hmm. what I suggest as a, as a practice, which I share with many people, is with the whole gratitude thing, I have asked God and I have manifested things that have put me to the point of prayer with him that I know every ounce of my being is asking for this thing because I feel it. Like I feel my whole being asking for A, B, or C. And Each time that I asked for something over the past year or two, an underlining factor was like, if this happens, then I'll really believe. If this happens, then I'll believe even more. Okay, if this happens, I won't any more of this, that, or the other. And and he's gotten me to the point where I'm fortunate enough that I no longer worry about yesterday and I don't stress about tomorrow because I strongly believe being present understanding that the eternal now is all that we have we have zero control over yesterday absolutely no control over tomorrow we only have control over our reaction to the emotions that we have in the moment in which we have them now i repeat that whole thing in part of my gratitude every single morning that's that's awesome. And I, it just brought me, you know, I, I remember last time when we were parting ways, you said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to check in on you. And you did. Yeah. And you did, which, which means the world to me. So when you say that something works for you, like, I just, I know, I know who you are, but we don't have to hang out that much mm-hmm. for me to, see, to be able to see you and know who you are just through your actions. You're a kind person, you know? Thank you. You're a very intelligent person. Thank you. You're a very talented person. 
you know, you, and you're driven, but you're driven by things that actually make sense and not what everybody else is chasing. You got your own mission, bro. You're on mission, mm-hmm. but it's your mission. Every day. You're not fighting anybody else's battles. You're and, on- and I'm not fighting myself anymore, it, which, which is what I'm trying to share with it's you. It's exactly what I was going to say next. Yeah. And that's, and that's why I share these things with everybody out there and especially with the individuals that sit in that chair because everyone comes here not really knowing what's going to happen or not really knowing what they're going to talk about. Those who come back more than once, they know exactly what's going to happen. That's why they come back because they know they're going to get a little something and I know I'm going to get a little something, right? I get the opportunity to give a little bit of my life to that person that sits in the chair and I know when they leave here, they feel good that they had that time with me. And for me, all I want is time. I just want time with other people that want to do something good for themselves. And if talking to me and listening and sharing openly without worrying what that over there is, is thinking I've about looked, it. I've looked at the thing twice. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. You know? but, that, but that's why like, I, I <sighs> when you undoubtedly believe in something, it becomes a truth. And when you can undoubtedly believe in something to do with your own life, it becomes your life's truth. Yeah. So when I say he has shown me that I don't need to worry about yesterday or stress about tomorrow, I know it's true because he has always, if you think about it, if you look back at your life, if you go home tonight and over the next 30 days, at the end of every day, evaluate your day. Even go back to evaluating some shit that has happened in the past. He's always showing up for you because you're fucking here. Absolutely. You're still fucking here. I, so he's showing up for you. I 100% agree right? with that. So thank him by becoming more present, right? When you become more present, you're, you're more there for yourself and you're more there for those who matter to you, right. your wife, your kids, your workplace, yourself, and realize that your faith that you're coming back into, it's the reason why you have your faith is so that you'll be safe, right? So that you'll feel good. Okay. Lean the fuck into that shit with every ounce of your physical and mental being, and you will absolutely see how you will no longer have to worry about the beast. Yeah. And, you know, I, w- I just want to say there's one thing that I heard recently that pretty much describes how I feel. So when I look, when I look at where I am today, right, I know one thing is for sure. Smooth seas never made a skilled sailor, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I've been in some rough shit. But guess what, man? Like, one sec. Sure. Sushi. Relax. Please. Please, you're, thump, you're thumping on the ground. Face, I love red nose pits too, man. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. So again, like I, I look to where I've gotten, and like you said, like there's a handful of times, maybe two handfuls of times where, you know, the odds were definitely stacked against me. Uh, I, I don't believe. I don't believe in coincidence and I know for a fact that God has protected me and and pulled me out of the mud so many times and dusted me off. Mm -hmm. Now I'm very, very grateful. And I, that gratitude that you talked about is something that I try to live. I try to live it. Well, keep, keep doing it. Like, I mean, really, really focus in on it. Like everything that we're talking about today. And obviously when the episode comes out, like, like watch it and watch it and watch it. And, and add these practices because I know what you want to accomplish. And I am telling you in my own life, I only sit here right now in front of you as this person because of all of the things that I have started to practice on a daily basis for years. And, and it won't happen overnight, but you'll, I guarantee you, once you open your eyes and you start doing these things and you, and as soon as you start actually seeing them, Like when you actually start realizing that you are being given things every day because of what you're giving, and I'm not just saying like giving money to someone or opening a door for someone. I'm saying like when you truly start giving for yourself and for others, 
it is unbelievable what gets returned it's to a, you. It's a different kind of feeling it is. too. You know? And and you will you will like when you you'll have a moment down the line, and you'll just be like, "Fuck, I gotta I gotta message him." Because you'll feel it. And right. what I mean by that is, I mean like you're you literally will tingle. You will you will feel something different. There's no. You just made the point for something that I say all the time. That altruism does not exist. You know, like giving with not expecting anything in return. Yeah, maybe not money. Maybe not give me a favor back or whatever. But when you do something for somebody else, you you are doing it for a reason. So you can feel good inside. Even if you tell nobody else, do you know how good it feels when, when you do something, you know, you help somebody altruism. You're asking me this, dude, the, the level, the high energy that I have when I leave this studio after recording, it's unparalleled to any feeling I've had before. And there's been other really good feelings, but when I sit here and have one of these conversations with somebody, the energy is through the roof, dude. And but why? Then, why aren't you a therapist? Because you would be. I, you know what? Like I say, this I am one. Right. I'm not medically certified. I've not gone to psychology therapy school or anything of that nature. But why does that only give you the ability to say I'm a therapist? What is a therapist? A therapist is someone who listens, right? Yeah. Now a lot of them, all they do is ask you fucking questions. How, How does that, does make, that you make you feel? feel? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, I'm. I believe. I believe. Therefore, I am. I believe I am a therapist because the larger portion of the people have all said to me the same thing. When they leave here, they feel better. When they come here, they feel like they're having a therapy session. So again, it's all up to the interpretation that the person perceives, right? right? I perceive myself as a therapist because those people that sit in that chair enjoy the conversation and they gain something from having a conversation with someone who's not afraid to say it the way it is. I was so excited. And I was like, he wants me back after the last Absolutely. <laughs> because I know that those people who were wanting, who desire to become a better person for themselves first, which in turn allows you to be a better person for others, will always change. You will all, every month, every week, every day, six months from now, you will have more to your story if you're willing to go after what you want. So why not sit down again and see see where you're at and I mean, share that situation? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting started. That's what I'm saying, right? Because <laughs> you're just so easy to talk to. I you love know, it. I, I look. I wanted to, I wanted to real quick tell you that I'm going to be the best barber in the world because I love it, and that's my form of being a therapist for others as well. And we you talked know? about this last yeah. time. Yeah. You, so you, are you done? I, uh, End of the month. Done. End of the month. So boom, there it is. Months ago, you said, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. It's something I like. So I'm going to go in and roll so much fun. and figure it out. You're a month away. So by now, when this goes up, this will go up mid-August. It's it's uh, beginning of May right now. You're one month away. So when this airs, you will now be a certified barber in the state of Florida. 100%. Congratulations, dude. That's fucking 100%. phenomenal. And that's making you feel... Amazing. It's amazing. I get to talk to people and you know what? They have no expectations. Neither do I, you know, and people open up to their barbers, man. All right. And I get to help people while making them look better. Well, good for you. I'm happy. Oh, That's yeah. Awesome. Life is good. And how cool is that? Like you'll be in the same field, the same similar field and industry as your wife, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, she was my motivation. She made made it like you know a subtle suggestion, and that's how she moves. You know, mm-hmm. it's always subtle suggestion. That's how like, all women move? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like uh, this, this, this subtle suggestion. Yeah, exactly. I love it. This, this, you know, this. It'd be nice if that. When I came home and the bed was made. I don't know, like yeah. maybe you know, like just make, just tell me yeah, to make yeah. the bed. Yeah, yeah. They, they go, they go around you know? it, but they get it. They get oh, the result yeah, they want. Yeah. But here, here's the thing: when we let go of our Peter Pan syndrome. And we find the woman that we truly give and receive the right amount of love to, we are willing to do anything to get it, and we will do anything to not lose it. I'm I'm so in love with Kelly till this day. That's awesome. Like like I never thought that was possible. My past relationships, I'd always I'd always start getting tired of the person. I not I'm not tired of anything that Kelly does. Yeah. Like even when even when she's mad at me, mm-hmm. like yeah, well, because usually it's you, it's you that did it that got her mad. At yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it it yeah. Let's, yeah, let's be I, honest, yeah, right? Like, but, I mean, 
they don't typically get mad for no well, they do get mad for no reason sometimes but anyhow she's like the sweetest person in the world though man that's awesome yeah. so this is phenomenal so so that will then be the sole job for you i don't know okay. you know like um, i have no idea probably but, always have a couple of side hustles yeah. we, what i suggest to you and i don't know if any of this kind of tech stuff uh, interests you it's really not that hard to figure out how to how to it takes a little bit of effort to learn all this different equipment and editing and, and things of that nature. But I would suggest since this world is very much on social media nowadays and uh, podcasting on YouTube is such a massive uh, thing for people, I would suggest you play with the idea as a side hustle to maybe develop your own podcast. And the reason why I say this, it doesn't have to be like me every single week. You could do like... Whatever it is, it just has to be consistent. So if you decide to do one episode every month, right. then you only need 12 episodes in a year. It's not hard to film 12 episodes. And if you gear that to a conversation about addiction or a conversation about recovery, right. now I'm sure there's hundreds of them out there. Sure. But all those hundreds are not you. That's true. And you then obviously have people like the twins. You know a lot of people that have gone down and done a lot of shit and managed to get to the other side, you would not be without guests. You would have fun doing it as a side hustle. You could start it in your house, in a room. And I, th I think you'd be really, really good at it because you, you practice every day at work when you become the barber. You're very comfortable talking to people. You're a very masculine man that's not afraid to be vulnerable and share his story. Millions of people would benefit from that story, from all your stories. And I think you would find a lot of your close friends or people that you've met through meetings right. at church would sit down and, and it would, it would just, it would be a great side hustle I, for I you. I could literally, I could literally just interview almost every army ranger that I've ever come in contact with. I could call it ranger recovery. <laughs> Already patented and trademarked yeah, yeah. here on the no, Life Choices yeah. podcast. Don't, don't right afterwards, it. I'm giving him a stamp. <laughs> you cannot use that title. Do not infringe. There you go. I don't have that authority. Thank you very much, as pleasure, always, man. coming and chatting with me. And I know there's more stuff to be put on the table, so we'll just have to come back again oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, and, and rehash some other stuff. Absolutely. And, and I like the fact that we wait a couple months in between sessions because it allows us both to live and experience they, and absorb. It's all growth, right? And then come it's, back it's and, all growth. and share. So, Alex, my man, thank you. I appreciate you so uh, much. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. For everyone out there in the Life Choices land, thank you once again for coming back each and every Tuesday at 2 p.m. here. We will see you next week. Much love, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now about the journey. Life, 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 life Choices Podcast. <laughs>